Raptor View Research Institute tracks American kestrel migration and breeding at MPG Ranch through the installation of constructed nest boxes and monitoring tools such as color bands and pinpoint tracking units. In 2011, Raptor View set out to monitor survival of individual birds and began to color band them. Raptor View has captured 191 American kestrels since this project began. In 2015, they captured and color banded 41 kestrels, 14 breeding adults, and 27 nestlings. We could see this blue band on this bird, and we'll know that that's our bird because it has metal on the left and blue on the right. Raptor View is able to view color combinations in the wild as the banded birds perform their daily activities. During past breeding seasons, we re-encountered 33% of color banded American kestrels who return to MPG each year to breed. This bird was banded in 2012. In 2013, he used a nest box on a power pole, but his mate died during incubation. In 2014, he moved to a nest box on a ponderosa pine, where he fledged two young with an unbanded female. In 2015, he returned to the same nest box. He and his mate were captured and both received pinpoint GPS units. The banded female you see here, black band on her left leg and aluminum on her right leg, was banded April of 2011. I can see his tiny tongue. Executive Director Rob Dominich allows these children to experience a bird up close so they can learn how we study birds of prey and how to recognize them in the wild. He shows the children the shape of a falcon's wing. Falcons have long pointed wings. Oh, this is an AHY, after hatch year bird. It's an adult, we don't know exactly how old it is. After hatch year means the bird is of breeding age and at least a year old. We hope to see it nesting successfully for years to come. The children have the rare opportunity of seeing a falcon up close. It has inspired them to take interest in birds and conserve wildlife. The young boy is now a committed bird observer as a result of these types of interactions. When migrant kestrels return to the ranch, they select a nest cavity within a few days. Males are likely to return first. When the female arrive, they begin to select the male they find suitable to help raise their young. After she selects him, the male finds nest cavities in his established territory and shows each one to her. In the end, she chooses the one she likes best. After a nest cavity is chosen, courtship continues. This pair flirts and fights in the air, while the male of another pair waits for his female to feed her a wiggly worm just a few weeks prior to laying their eggs. These actions strengthen the bonds between the couples. Raptor View is able to confirm who copulates with whom by viewing their color band combinations. This male was banded with his mate in early May of 2014. Later that breeding season, he used a nest box with his original mate. They laid four eggs, but none of them hatched. On May 13th, he was seen outside of his territory, copulating with a biting, unbanded female. She must be encouraging him to leave before he gets caught. Previous research suggests that kestrel pairs stick together. However, if a partner is lost, both sexes don't hesitate to choose a new mate. Raptor View's research suggests kestrels often choose different mates each year, regardless of whether former partners are alive. We have installed 30 kestrel nest boxes on the property. They are fixed to poles and live or dead trees where kestrel habitat exists. We monitored 16 kestrel nests this year half in nest boxes, 
and half in natural cavities. Kestrels don't take the time to build a nest, so Raptor View adds shavings to nest boxes. It has been shown to increase nesting success of American kestrels. Raptor View has noticed a few birds use the same nest in multiple years, perhaps due to success and prey availability in their chosen territories. One way to capture American kestrels is to remove them from their nest boxes towards the end of incubation. A little camera attached to a PVC pipe, called a peeper cam, is used to spy in nest cavities and allows researchers to record each stage of nesting with less disturbance to the birds. Here we can see the female kestrel incubate her eggs on the peeper cam video screen. Tyler Vito climbs the tree to access the box. He uses a glove to replace the peeper cam so the kestrel cannot flee and the peeper cam is lowered. He enters the box from above. Care is taken to not disturb the eggs and Tyler removes her. After pulling her out of the box, she is lowered in his denim handbag. Raptor View biologist Adam Shredding repels the bag. One, eight, three, three, dash, one, two, four, one, five. The bird is carefully removed to begin the data collection process. First, Adam places a hood on her head to keep her calm. So yeah, we'll put it on the right leg, so we'll put an R with a circle. Once the aluminum band is securely in place, he takes a series of measurements. This kestrel has been chosen to carry a special GPS unit called a pinpoint GPS to study migration paths. Raptor View takes care to assess if she is healthy enough to wear the unit. Adam shows us a featherless patch on her chest. These skin patches make direct contact with her eggs and keep them warm during incubation. Finally, she is weighed inside of a sock to calm her further with no risk of escape. So pretty good, 34. Is that all you use the pole set up? Yeah, so that's a pretty big bird, so we can use our regular harnesses. We can put up to 3% body weight on these birds, including our bands, harness, and transmitter. The tiny harness the bird will wear holds the pinpoint GPS unit. The breast patch is made of kangaroo leather for its strength and weight, and the straps are made of tubular Teflon. And inside we've sewn elastic, so you can get a nice stretch out of it, which just gives it a better fit on the bird. The Pinpoint GPS unit weighs just 1.1 grams. It is pre-programmed to record accurate locations over the course of a year. Kestrel populations travel south some as far as Central America, but little is known of their travel routes. It fits like a little backpack. Tyler and Adam fix the harness to the bird. They'll sit more in here, and then kind of just comes up right underneath as well, just like a backpack. Just kind of getting it nice and snug, not super tight. Yeah, go ahead and take that flag off. Eventually we're going to crimp these down, so right now we got to be gentle when we check the fit because we don't want to pull the straps and undo what Tyler did, but that does feel pretty good. It feels perfect to I me. I think so. Let's clamp her. Okay. Theoretically. There's no movement here. Yeah, right? That's See, like we're not impacting the wing at all there. Great. Tyler crimps the crimps and glues the ends of the Teflon to ensure they will not come loose. The unit will travel with her on her migration south. We hope to recapture her when she returns to MPG next spring and collect the valuable data she gathered on her journey. A network of scientists work together to study American kestrel population decline across the country. The data gathered here contributes to the combined effort of the American Kestrel Partnership. Although the male helped incubate the eggs, the female mostly tends to the young after they hatch. 
He does, however, bring prey for the family. Parents often feed the young together. Then, after two weeks, whole, unprepared food is brought to the nest for the chicks to devour. These chicks are close to fledging, but before they fledge, they are pulled out of the nest box so they can wear color bands as well. This year, Raptor View saw high nest success compared to previous years. 46 nestlings fledged. In Tongue Creek, we see an adult female deliver a grasshopper to this juvenile. It looks like the young one gets the treat. But if we take a closer look, you can see the adult hangs on to the grasshopper encouraging the young to fly after it. She teaches them to hunt on their own. Grasshoppers and insects are plentiful in the grasslands around the ranch. This young bird happily consumes a grasshopper next to another young fledgling, but she has to protect her meal by hunching her wings around her prey. The other juvenile tries to steal the prize without success and only ends up eating the scraps. The hungry juvenile looks out for an insect delivery of her own. She tries to steal it again and again, but the meal is finished. She waits patiently, then reacts by flicking her wings to show she is hungry. A color-banded male finally brings her something to eat. Parents deliver prey to the newly fledged birds for the first two weeks. A male takes off from this perch and then hunts the hillside. Soon, an adult female catches an insect and delivers it. Another kestrel family in woodchuck draw raised young in a nest box. The female wears a pinpoint GPS unit the male and the fledglings wear bands. A male has caught a songbird on his last hunt, which is not the average catch for the insect and mice-eating kestrels. He hoards it from the rest of his family, causing him to struggle to eat it on the branches. Raptor View deployed 14 pinpoint GPS units on adult American kestrels during the 2015 season, 10 on females, and four on males. When these birds return to MPG, we hope to recapture them, to gather their migration data, and relieve them of carrying the little backpack. We will enjoy releasing them so they can get back to other activities like bathing and fighting off unruly magpies. MPG's kestrels help us learn more about these colorful little hunters. Many color banded birds have been recited year after year, which allows us to gather detailed information on their breeding habits and who they prefer to hang out with. They have produced and raised young, and now we hope they can provide us with valuable migration data. We look forward to learning about the location and habitat in which they spend their winter. <laughs>